Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Kaufman, and we're about to go beyond the terminus. Today, we're going to examine an example of a case that was referred to me by a dentist who was approximately five hours away by car. For some referring dentists, we will occasionally do what's known as a meet and treat, assuming that we know that the diagnosis has already been confirmed and the tooth definitely needs endodontic treatment. This 62-year-old female was complaining of sensitivity to chewing in tooth number 47, the mandibular right second molar. Interestingly, she was not complaining of thermal sensitivity and found that symptoms only occurred when she was eating something on this tooth, whether it was soft or hard, it didn't make a difference. Tooth number 46, the first molar, had been endodontically treated and crowned because of a previous crack. This indicated to me that the patient was using this side very heavily. The referring dentist realized that this tooth needed a crown, but had some concerns about the possible complications that could occur because he surmised that there may have been pulpal problems and wanted to ensure that the patient had no symptoms of pulpitis after the crown was prepared and cemented. Although there was no indication that there may be, have been a crack in this tooth, the minimal restoration evidence of radiographic attrition and high prevalence of distal marginal ridge fractures in second molars generally suggest possible pulpal involvement due to a crack in the tooth. Clinical examination revealed that this second molar had a small composite restoration on the occlusal aspect, but I noted severe attrition because of the mesial tilt of the tooth. The radiographic examination showed no unusual findings at the apices. Periodontal probings were within normal limits. Thermal tests produced responses within the range of normal as well, as were percussion tests. Transillumination was normal, and there was no evidence of fractures. The tooth sleuth test performed on each of the cusps was also normal. Chewing tests performed with a cotton roll were mildly positive. One final test was done by taking an explorer and skating along the occlusal surface adjacent to the borders of the composite. Contacting the exposed dentin caused by the attrition resulted in reproduction of the patient's symptoms exactly. Closer examination of the occlusion revealed that this molar was slightly measly tilted and the opposing maxillary second molar fit very intimately into the distal aspect of the tooth resulting in excessive wear. The final diagnosis was simple attrition of the tooth caused by the occlusion. The exposed dentins was resulting in the patient's symptoms. There was no evidence of pulpitis, so the treatment would be preparation of the tooth for a full crown or onlay that would cover the exposed dentin. I suggested a temporary restoration initially to see how the tooth responded to the preparation and to see if symptoms resolved. If they did, final cementation would proceed without endodontic treatment. Whenever preparing teeth like this for full crowns, it's also possible that while the initial chewing sensitivity may disappear, elevated thermal sensitivity may reach the point where the patient's not comfortable. In that case, elective endodontic treatment would be indicated prior to final cementation of the restoration. In this case, more conservative management of the tooth is indicated. Pulps perform a valuable function for teeth. Electively removing them without understanding the reasons for the patient's symptoms may seem an expedient solution. But access of the tooth and preparation of the canals invariably results in loss of dentin and weakening of the tooth. And this is something we should avoid whenever possible. We had initially scheduled a patient for treatment appointment of 90 minutes, but after only a few minutes of diagnosis, we concluded that endodontic treatment was not needed. Did we lose significant production for the day? Yes, we did. Was it more important to do the right thing for the patient? Absolutely. The patient was referred back to the referring dentist for restorative management of this case without endodontic treatment. It comes down to the ultimate question. What would you have done in your own mouth? And in some cases, endo may not always be the best answer. Remember, when we do the right thing, we both get better, patients and clinicians. Thanks for joining me and reviewing this Beyond the Terminus case with me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, this channel is free and unsponsored. You can help it grow by telling your friends and colleagues. Your feedback and topic suggestions in the comment box of each video is always appreciated. I look forward to seeing you the next time we go Beyond the Terminus. See you then.